Greetings, vinyl <laughs> community friends and followers. It's Mazzy here on a Friday, and I'm going to finish my Barolo from last night. If you watched the um, one of the videos I posted, I had some pizza and a wine. This is the Apple Record Catalog, the Beatles Apple Record Catalog. I'm going to showcase all their non beatle non-Yoko, non-Solo albums. I'm going to show them to you in order of release, pretty much everything, not singles, just LPs, because I'm a big Beatle collector. I see I'm in a shadow here. I need to get that. There we go. How's that? <laughs> Lighting expert here. Anyway, it's okay. I'm a big Beatle collector. You can see part of my collection there. We won't get into that tonight. That'll be for a special six hour video that'll be kind of like uh, the sorrow and the pity or something that'll just go on and on forever in fact you might have to subscribe It'd be like the godfather one two and three of vinyl community videos so i'm just going to show you these i'll talk a little bit about them mostly just show you the covers i'm going to show them again in order that they came out not in numerical order because sometimes catalog numbers were different than the actual release dates I'm not going to get into exact release dates and things, but we'll just do it. Anyway, the first one is the first non beatle related artist that Apple signed and put out. James Taylor. The first Apple artist. He was living in London at the time. And Peter Asher produced this, who obviously signed him as his, became his manager eventually and signed him to Warner Brothers when it exploded. But there you go, Apple Records. And there's a song on here called Something in the Way She Moves. Hmm, no comment on that. Okay. Then they, they signed a jazz, a famous jazz quartet, the modern jazz quartet. And this is under the jasmine tree and in the MJQ is Milk Jackson, John Lewis, Percy Heath, and Connie Kay. Great, 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 great. You need to pick up MJQ if you're into jazz. I like vibes and um, well, good vibes, any kind of vibes, but Milt Jackson vibes are good vibes. And then another hit, Mary Hopkins, who actually ended up marrying Tony Visconti, who produced a lot of her music. But the hit single was a song that Paul McCartney always wanted to to uh, have someone record, and it was Those Were the Days, which, as you know, that became a huge worldwide hit for her. And uh, she did vocals in several languages that you can find, I think, on one of the CD reissues. But um, that's an old Russian lullaby folk song and uh, with modern lyrics at the time. But um, I feel like a Mary Hopkins sandwich. All right, Mary Hopkins. And then an artist that uh, George shepherded along and wrote a song for and produced most of the album, Jackie Lomax. And I have a copy with hype st sticker still. He wrote Sour Milk Sea, which I believe was on the recent White Album uh, outtakes portion on the 50th anniversary. And here's my play copy. This is actually a sealed copy from when I worked in record stores in the 70s. That's when I got a lot of these, because we they had a deal where Apple, they put out as almost cutouts, but they weren't cut, as I recall. And then I have two Billy Prestons. Have we forgotten Billy Preston? No, we haven't. That's the way God planned it, which is the song he sang at the concert for Bangladesh. I saw him once, um, no, twice, at the George Harrison 74 tour. And I was at the concert for George at the Royal Albert Hall in, uh, was it 2002 or three? Three, I think, right? You can look it up. Then we go back and we have another MJQ record called Space. See, space doesn't really matter because in space, no one can hear you scream, right? Or play vibes. I have some Indian uh, Ravi Shankar in the background. Love that. We'll get to that later, though. And then 
Paul McCartney wrote a little ditty and had a group that Apple signed under the name the Ivies. John Lennon gave them their new name and you know them as Badfinger. This is my uh, overpressing copy. When I worked at the record factory chain in San Francisco, their version of cutouts were called overpressings and it's not punched, which is great, but it's, I have a seal copy and my play copy. That's a whole tragic story on its own, right? Badfinger, but um, great record. I think what, four of the songs from this album were actually in the Magic Christian movie that Ringo and Peter Sellers were in. And uh, great movie, kind of wacky. A couple of members of Monty Python are in it. And um, there's actually a separate soundtrack album that's not on Apple, as I recall. That had just a couple of Badfinger songs and some other material. Then we're getting into uh, another artist that George Harrison shepherded along at Apple, Doris Troy. I think this is a UK edition I have. This is my American edition. Produced by George Harrison. Designed by John Kosh, who was a great record uh, designer. He actually designed the Let It Be cover by the Beatles and Abbey Road cover, and he went on to do most of um, Linda Ronstadt's records of the uh, in the se throughout the 70s into the 80s. And he just actually, I just got the Linda Ronstadt live from the, the 80, the first live album that they ever, she ever released from 1980, I think it is. And uh, he designed that cover as well. It's got that 80s design that he did on Mad Love for her. A little side note, you don't mind Maslov uh, going on a tangent once in a while, right? Hmm. It's got a good nose. Billy Preston again. Another one produced by George Harrison. Now this is a bizarre kind of classical avant-garde one. The Whale, John Tavernier. I don't even remember what this sounds like. I don't think I've listened to it in 25 years, but there you go. And then another Badfinger album. Here's my uh, overpressing copy. And this is my play copy with this wonderful There they are. Tragic story, but this has no matter what. Great, great, great single. George Harrison produced that, and I think the rest of the record, oh, was produced by Jeff Emmerich, and you know him as one of the engineers who worked with the Beatles from uh, Revolver on. I think, oh, and the cover shot, Richard DeLello, who worked at Apple, and there's a great, great book about Apple, which kind of connects with this Apple presentation, is The Longest Cocktail Party. Check it out. Bizarre business ethics and uh, a lot of shit happened with Apple Records. And if you've seen the Ruddles, it really plays on that Ruddle core when everyone's walking basically out of the building with everything. Not great businessmen. This is between Brian Epstein dying and Alan Klein kind of coming in and doing his fucked up shit. Anyway, and then Radna Krishna Temple. Now, I love this record. I, For me... Growing up as a kid, George Harrison was always the one who turned me on to world music. He turned me on to Indian music because of Rubber Soul, probably Norwegian Wood with his sitar playing. Then I started going and buying, at that time, Ravi Shankar records. I saw him twice in San Francisco, loved it. I saw him at the um, George Harrison tour in 74, loved it. Saw him at the uh, concert for George Harrison at Royal Albert Hall. And um, I love Indian music. I love world music. This is Krishna, the whole Hare Krishna thing. George Harrison produced. John Kosh, art directed again. But again, if you like something a little, I, I want to say offbeat, but it, everything's offbeat these days, right? So much stuff. I love this stuff. Anyway, Radha Krishna Temple. I love world music. I love ethnic music. And it's just really great stuff. I like experimental music. 
even though I'm showing you a lot of pop records, but it's the way it is. More bad finger, straight up. And this is the one that Todd Rundgren produced, except I think three or four songs George Harrison produced. It includes Baby Blue and a little trivia there recently, last, what, five years ago, whenever it was. Baby Blue is a song that was the final song used in the TV show Breaking Bad. If you know the story of that series, you know what Baby Blue refers to. Anyway, Bad Finger, straight up. A soundtrack to a movie I've never seen come together. There's no Beatles songs on here. Instrumentals, plus a, um, a lot of show music, plus um, Games People Play by Joe South. That's a single that wasn't written for this, but it's a great song. So there you go. More Mary Hopkins. We got Ocean Song. I don't know if I said this before. She was married to Tovis for to Tony Bisconti for a while. He might have even actually produced this. Yeah, produced by Tony Visconti. Again, designed by John Kosh, and the photography is Ian, Ethan Russell. Ethan Russell did all the Let It Be pictures, did the Who's Next cover, did the very last Beatle photo shoot at Tittenhurst Park, uh, George's, uh, John Lennon's estate. So, um, Ethan Russell, he did, the, he did a session on the White Album. I, have, I collect rock photography too, and I have a couple of his, one of his pictures. Great soundtrack, Raga, Ravi Shankar. It's got a little book in its side. There's George and Ravi practicing. Incredible, incredible, incredible. And you guys probably know this, so I'm not like teaching you any trivia you don't know, but maybe there's a person out there that doesn't. Ravi Shankar is the father of Nora Jones. He also has a daughter, Anusha Shankar, two different mothers. El Topo soundtrack on Apple. They really pushed some bizarre stuff, didn't they? Wow. Uh-oh, Alan Klein presents. This used to be so controversial, right? The Pope smokes dope. I live in Seattle. We can smoke dope any time we want. We can go buy it at the corner store. We're one of those few states. Not that I'm a big pot smoker, but anyway, this. David Peel, who uh, produced by John and Yoko, of course. Interesting, not a great record, but interesting. Ah, Elephant's Memory Band. When they backed John Lennon, uh, on Sometime in New York City and the New York uh, Madison Square Garden show. That was actually okay. I never liked this band. I thought they were a little too loose and sloppy and the, too much saxophone in, the, in not a good way. But that's subjective. You can say something differently, but um, here you go. That Elephant's Memory Band. John and Yoko. John sure had a fascination with these guys. I didn't get it, but New York band. New York area band. Bet you they're from Jersey though, right? Not that there's anything wrong with Jersey. Kind of a comp, uh, Those Were the Days is on here. And also, um, Goodbye is on here, the song Paul McCartney wrote. Great, great song. And uh, wrote it, I'm not, I think he wrote it for Mary. I could be wrong about that, but beautiful, beautiful song. This is a great record. It's got a really cool version of Que Sera Sera is on here as well. So. Seek this one out as well. I think this is the only record that Apple Records ever reissued from another label. Obviously, late 50s uh, Christmas record, Phil Spector Christmas record with the Ronettes, Bobby Sox, Darlene Love, um, the Wall of Sound. Get it out of your head of the bullshit about him and JL and what he did. He produced some great friggin' records. Maybe some will say that Hall a wall of reverb is dated, but I still love the production of uh, All Things Must Pass. And he produced Imagine and the first John and M with uh, Pasagono Band, but with John. I like though that John Lennon, this is a little note too, for Imagine had him record everything dry, not with reverb. So 
if you got the box set, the recent Imagine box set, you hear all these great, great pieces of music without all the bigness. And it's kind of nice that there's that option. Once it's on there in the recording, it's really hard to take it off. You really can't. But anyway, it's a great Christmas set. You need a version of this. This is not the original cover. Santa's wearing back to mono button. I remember this came out when I worked in record stores and we all had back to mono buttons. And I might even have one here in my collection somewhere. But I'm not going to find it right now. But anyway. Lon and Derek Van Eaton. Produced by Klaus Vorman on Apple Records. It's kind of a beautiful album. Let's see who took this cover. I like to give credit on photographers. Um, produced by John Vorman. Photographed by Clive Aerosmith, who's a, who is a pretty well-known celebrity and, fa and uh, British fashion photographer throughout in the day, late 60s and 70s. If you're still watching, man, you must be bored out of your mind. You must be, have nothing else to do on a Friday night or whatever night you're watching this. Of course, this could be, you know, 2027 by the time this turns up and who knows what's gonna be around in 2027, right? Couple more, two more to go. Ravi Shankar and Ali Akbar Khan, right? In concert, 1972, beautiful record. Again, I love that Indian music. I love the Sarad. It's a concert, where's this recorded? Um, I think it was recorded in New York. I don't remember. I'm not gonna read it all. You can read it, you can Google it. But anything by Ravi Shankar, every time I see one of his records on, is it the World uh, America? What's that label? I'm blanking out. You can write it down there. I have about, eight or nine Ravi Shankar records. Love, love, love it. And then the appropriate last album that Apple released, non-Beatle record again, Ass. It's kind of a um, appropriate title for the end of uh, Badfinger. They got fucked big time. I mean, obviously they went to Warner Brothers later and there was all this bullshit about contractual obligations and bad management. And if you don't know, two of the members actually committed suicide. So not a good thing in any band or in any human, any situation. Uh, this one was produced and arranged, oh, pr produced by Chris Thomas, who later went on, great producer in the 70s. I think he produced uh, The Pretenders uh, did he produce a McCartney record later on? He might have. I'm not quite... I can't remember right now. I should know this stuff. Um, but there you go. That's Apple Records. The Apple Records catalog. The Beatles' infamous label. And um, enjoy the music. <laughs>